Hello there, my name is Ismaus and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial and uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, how to create a uh, character crying, uh, you can see we have Suzanne here, uh, crying from just ex a lot of excitement. Uh, this is uh, Tears of Joy uh, from the overwhelming support Blender has been getting over the few, uh, over the last few days and uh, yeah. yeah. So this is what we're going to be creating, you can see we have uh, some tears rolling over his face and you can see there is uh, this tear that is hanging over his chin and then drops off after. Like, yeah, so this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, so what we're going to be do using here, let me first put this aside. Uh, we're going to be using two, two things here. Uh, the particle system to simulate uh, the tears dropping and uh, uh, moving on the surface of uh, the skin or the contours, following the contours of the skin. And uh, also use Blender's dynamic painting to kind of create uh, the trail of tears, uh, the wet maps are for the yeah, wet surfaces uh, that you see there. Yeah, so let's dive in and uh, open up a new Blender project, add a Suzanne Monkey or any character you want to use, uh, but to make sure that uh, the mesh you use or character you use is, use, uh, is UV unwrapped uh, because uh, the dynamic painting we're going to be using relies on UV uh, texture coordinates or UV mapping. Uh, so yeah, then, uh, what we're going to do is create uh, the source or emitter of the tears. Uh, so I'll just add a plane here, uh, scale it, and I place it near the, uh, what, what is it called, uh, the tear gland? I think that's what it's called. Uh, so I, I would think that uh, it would be around there. You don't have to put it inside, uh, because if you put it inside, uh, then the particles will be emitted uh, into uh, the in inside of the mesh. So now we can, let me first reduce the timeline here to about 100 frames and uh, playback. Uh, select uh, the emitter, go to the particle systems, add a new particle system and see this is what we are getting. Uh, the tears are just jetting outside. Uh, that's not what we want. We want the tears to kind of fall on onto his face and uh, roll down uh, the skin, his skin. So for that, uh, let's first go to under the velocity and reduce that uh, because that's what uh, the normal velocity is pushing those particles away from uh, the mesh, uh, but I want them to be pushed towards the mesh. So let me just give them a negative normal velocity and that should push them towards the mesh. The mesh. Uh, then for the mesh, we want to go to the particles, to the uh, physics property and give it a collision property so that the particles can collide uh, with the mesh. Now if we play back, you should see particles uh, kind of colliding with this mesh and then bouncing off. Uh, another thing we want to do is uh, we want these particles, instead of just bouncing off, uh, we want them to stick to the face and uh, roll down uh, the face. Uh, for that, what we're going to do is increase the stickiness in the particle settings. So if we put that to one, you can see now uh, they're trying to roll off uh, the face, but uh, because the velocity is a bit too much, uh, they're just jumping off after a few seconds. Uh, so to reduce the velocity, we can start by increasing the damping here. This will try and reduce uh, the velocity of uh, some of the particles. Now we can also increase the randomness. You can see some of them are just rolling on and then falling off. Another thing we're going to do is uh, reduce the normal velocity. Let's pr try negative 0.5 so that this is a bit slower. Let's try Okay, the particles are also too many, so let's try about 10 particles. You can see this is much better. But uh, they're all being emitted in one place, and uh, that's not what I want. So what I'm going to do is go to edit mode and uh, extrude this face just a bit so that these polygons are around uh, the eye. And uh, now they can be randomly generated or emitted from different places. But the problem is uh, we're still having this mesh is uh, far away from uh, the face. So the, the tears kind of appear like they are coming from uh, air, thin air. So what we're going to do is go select the mesh at the emitter and then go to the modifiers, add a shrink wrap modifier, shrink wrap modifier, and uh, select the head as the surface. Let's bring this just down so that it's around there. You can offset this 
just a bit so that we can we are always looking at uh, we're always seeing that and uh, right now the particle system is not considering uh, this shearing surface and the particles are still emitting uh, from where they were being emitted uh, before so I'll just push this above so that uh, the particles the particle system considers uh, the placement so the uh, the placement or the deformation added by this this shearing graph I also want some particles on this side so what I'm going to do is add a mirror modifier at uh, we're going to use the Suzanne head as our mirror object and also make sure that uh, the mirror modifier is above the particle system uh, so that particles can also be emitted on this side as well okay for some reason it's only one let's see let's see if I apply let's just apply the particle system so that we get particles from this side and uh, some particles on this side I can also increase uh, the particle count just so we have more a little bit more particles to, to meet around and you can see now what is left is uh, uh, the shape of the tier or the the, sh the tier itself so what we're going to do is uh, create an icosphere and uh, we're going to shape it in the fall in the shape of a tier so I'll just select one vertex and turn on proportional editing by pressing O on your keyboard and uh, just push one of the vertex one of the vertices uh, like that you can also select uh, vertex under here and just try to flatten that area like that just a bit like that I'm also going to select everything push them above so that my pivot point is uh, on the surface like that if I scale this down now I can go to the particle system under render settings change at object and select this as our object now if we start emitting you can see the particles have changed into these teardrops this teardrop I'm also going to increase the size and maybe randomize the scale just a bit but uh, the problem we are seeing now is that uh, the particles are the they're following the direction but uh, the orientation of the particle or the tier is not correct so what I'm going to do is uh, turn, on, turn on object rotation and I can start rotating this so that yeah I think yeah, that's better now you can even ex extrude this further turn on proportional editing Um, make sure you don't have any particles being emitted in the inside to the inside so yeah so we have the tiers done I will just need to give them a material so I'll just add a new material and uh, turn on okay, is blender hanging it's hanged ah god okay so now we can start creating the trail uh, of tears uh, because right now if we go to shading is this too slow I should I give this skin color and then give this a new material give this a transmission of one remove the roughness and I can go in and turn on screen space reflections and refractions and uh, go to the material settings and uh, have spin space screen space refractions turned on as well for that so that you can see the mesh refracted okay now we have the tears now we just need to create uh, the weight maps like you see there let's pause that now for that uh, that is very easy to set up just go under the physics property turn on a dynamic dynamic painting and uh, give this a type of canvas and uh, uh, you want to to the format to be image sequence 
and uh, this is where you determine the resolution of the mesh of the images at uh, the higher the resolution the more clear the are uh, these trails trails will be uh, so let's go in here and I want uh, the surface type to be uh, paint yeah uh, you can turn on dissolve if you want uh, the, tears, the tears to dissolve uh, after a few seconds. Let me put this to around 100 seconds. And uh, yeah, if the output, yeah, that's it. I uh, just have to select where you want uh, the baked image sequence to go. Uh, let me, to make this simple, I'll just put this on my desktop. Accept. And now we need to go to select uh, the particle emitter. Give it a particle settings. Uh, sorry, a dynamic paint settings. Uh, the type should be brush, uh, and then uh, the paint uh, should be uh, the particle system. Particle system, and then select the particle system. This will be the particle system of these particles here. Now, the radius, uh, the effect solid radius, is simply the radius. Let me just show you here. You can see how big are the paint around the object, around the particle is. You can see that trail, how large that trail is. That's the radius they are talking about. So you want that to be uh, small enough. Oh, let's try 0 0.05. Or you can use uh, the particle radius. Uh, but uh, let's first go with uh, this radius here. Back. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is bake, first bake uh, the particle system here. Let me subdivide this so that I can have, split this so that I can have the timeline. And go to the particle system and uh, bake these particles before we start baking the particle paint, the dynamic painting. Great. Now let me first increase uh, the, the thickness here and the damping as well uh, before we bake so I'll have to clear let this bake and bake again yeah that's I wanted at least a tear to hang around the surface and uh, I was able to do that by increasing uh, the stickiness. Yeah, so maybe you can increase the size of these tiers just a bit. So that they are easier to see. Now let's start painting. So for the painting, I just need to select the canvas, go to the physics property, uh, make sure everything is set. I have the the, the path and now we can hit back can take a few seconds uh, but uh, depending on the resolution you have set I uh, remember the higher the resolution you set here are uh, the higher the quality of your back but uh, it might take a little bit longer so yeah now that you, if you are done with that you just need to go under uh, import texture uh, multi sorry image sequence and that uh, it should navigate you to navigate to where you saved uh, the image sequence let's see we have this here so we only baked our uh, paint uh, i want uh, the wet map uh, so for that make sure that you check our wet map under the output here so right now we are baking we baked paint paint maps uh, that will bake the color of the paint uh, but i want to bake wet maps because th that gives you a little bit more details uh, than uh, uh, the paint map the paint maps here but let me even check off that uh, so that this is faster and uh, hit back again just need to give it a few seconds great now we can import our image sequence if we go back you just need to scroll down until you find uh, the weight the weight map so you can see we have the weight map and uh, just import click one image and uh, it should import the entire sequence 
Now to have it play back in your sequence, let me first preview this node, hold down control shift and then click the node. Make sure you have the node wrangler add-on enabled for that to work. Uh, if you play back right now, you see that uh, we only have one image loaded in. So to, to play back uh, the entire sequence, you just need to turn on auto refresh here. You can see how the tears uh, kind of being rendered the weight map you can see the weight map now yeah so again you can see the resolution of our our image is not really uh, that good uh, because our resolution is a bit low so if you increase it uh, you will get uh, a better or high quality uh, render uh, also this you can see the thickness of our kind of strokes paint strokes uh, is determined by let's go back to the paint uh, is determined by uh, this value here so if you reduce this value you should also reduce the thickness here so let me do that so at uh, this time let me just use let me first show you this and uh, then i can show you the use particle radius so i'm setting it to 0.1 you can see how this looks now if we bake again every time you change uh, the dynamic paint settings you need to bake again so that they are rendered as well or baked again so bake after you're done you need to select the node and hit alt r to reload uh, that node you can see now the radius has also reduced You can turn on dissolve uh, it's already on uh, you, if you want uh, this to dissolve you can just inc reduce uh, the time the time here so 50 is the entire length of the time of the timeline so let me just have it to 50 yeah and that but uh, now to apply the wet map to make sure that uh, it gives you this effect uh, that is very simple we're just going to use this as a mask uh, for a color mix RGB so if I use this as a factor, I can have this as one color and the weight area to be the same color. You can even just pick that, but I make it a little bit darker. You can see. Remember the resolution or the quality of your of your of the of the paint will be determined by. Uh, the resolution here so let me make this a bit darker to make to sell this effect even more uh, what you can do is uh, duplicate this and use it for uh, the roughness so the tear trails would be more rough would be more reflective so it's something Let's see. I can see. Ah, uh, you can see we have a few gaps here. Ah, uh, this can be reduced. The gaps between those uh, strokes can be reduced by increasing uh, the sub steps here. Uh, that should improve the quality and also re get rid of those gaps. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it. I don't want this to be too long, so I'll end the tutorial here. And uh, if you want to hide these, you just go select these uh, these emitters and go under the instancing and uh, disable render instancing and uh, also display instancing. So you can hide that. You can see now the tears appear like they ca they're coming directly from uh, the the eyes like that yeah thank you for watching